All right, we go up. All right, please be seated. Thank you very much. I'm going to stand here because I think the video is better here and I can see you better from here. Is that okay? I stand up here. All right. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Ah. My first time in Kenya, my first time. Yes. <laughs> and this is my first trip and it's my second message. And uh, I'm glad to be here. Amen? Are you glad to be here? I mean, if you're glad to be here, smile, do something, let me know you're happy. <laughs> let me see your smile, because your smile travels a mile. <laughs> Amen. Mama, thank you for those wonderful words. Uh, and I've been surrounded by great people, the people I meet. And Mama has been hosting me, and she's my mom, uh, far away from my hometown. And she's been good to me, and praise God for her. Amen. And especially when you travel from one country to the other, you begin to appreciate even small things. Yeah. It's because if you, you know, in, in your own town, you take things for granted. But especially when you come from another town, every small thing, you bow down in humble adoration at the goodness and the mercy of God. And I'm glad to stand here today to tell you that thank God for our mom and thank God for my dear friend, Beyond. Uh, you know, I must quickly tell you the, a little bit of how we connected so that you know I'm standing here not by accident. All right, you better know that. Because if you realize I'm standing here not by accident, you will take me a little more seriously. You know what I'm talking about. The point is, I met uh, Bjorn in, in Singapore. And I was telling myself, I mean, when the meeting was organized, I was asking myself, what am I doing here? Because I was not very sure as to the arrangements of the meeting, not very, very well organized, to put it mildly, all right? And then I, and then somebody said, please go to that room, you're going to be staying in that room. So I went up the room and then I found somebody in the room. And I thought this room was going to be all by myself, but I found somebody in that room. And that person smiled at me the best he can, and that was Pastor Bjorn. And I'm telling myself, man, what am I doing here? <laughs> what am I doing in this room? But long story short, I believe God connected us uh, in that room. And that's the whole point I'm here today. Will somebody say hallelujah? It's good that God does connections. And the reason why we are today here is because of that. Uh, it seemed a mistake. It seemed an accident. But in God's sight, nothing is an accident. Everything is a planned incident. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Romans 8.28 says, all things work together for good. Somebody say for good. That means it doesn't matter. But there are two conditions. Number one, if you love the Lord. Amen. Somebody shout amen, love the brother. Amen. You must love the Lord. And number two, you must be called according to his purpose. Don't quote Romans 8.28 if you don't love the Lord and you're not walking in His purpose. It is not for you. Am I right? Because some of us claim scriptures, but it doesn't belong to you. Romans 8.28 makes it clear. All things will work together for you. Everything will work together. The good, the bad, the ugly will work together for you. If you love the Lord, and you are called according to his purpose. Somebody say his purpose. His purpose. One more time. His purpose. What about this side? Can you see, please say his purpose? Thank you very much, ladies. <laughs> because this is key. The reason why this meeting is happening is because I want to talk to you about what is called his purpose. And I'm going to talk about many things, uh, but we're going to start by this one verse and by the way i come from a land called uh, india and the flag is right there in the end thankfully it was there all right and uh, number two i come from a city called bangalore and uh, bangalore has seen my my flight again the reason i'm putting this again here to you tell you is i'm not here by accident i'm here by divine plan of almighty god you know why i'm saying that first of all i met Bayon. i told you the second thing is when i left my country uh, from bangalore to bombay and my flight was from Bombay. Bombay has never seen floods like this in the last 10 years. Flooding everywhere. Airport is flooded. 
cancelled 70 flights. And I'm supposed to take the, the, the flight the very next day. 70 flights cancelled. An aircraft overshot the runway and it got stuck at the end of the tarmac. So one runway was closed. So we're talking about a kind of scenario. I'm thinking to myself, probably I will not be here. Are you getting my point? That's what my mind said. But I'm believing God that I must be here. But scenarios didn't work that very well. Did you get my point? And so if I'm here, you better lift your hands and praise the Lord. Because I'm here with a word for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am here with a word just for you. And I want to thank you for being here. Because you know you people have come. And without you there's no meeting. Amen. I cannot preach to empty chairs. I'm so glad you're here. Amen. So I want you to do me a favor. Switch your mind on open mode. Your mind is like a parachute. It works only when it is open. Right? Your mind is like a parachute. It works only when it is open. So please keep your mind open. Let the Spirit of God speak to you. And I'm going to do my best in this morning to ensure that what we are learning about in terms of worship is grounded and connected with the word. Will you say amen to that? Amen. And a little bit of background about myself. I was never trained to be a preacher. I didn't like to be a preacher. I never wanted to do what I do. But God has got a great sense of humor. He actually gets you into what you don't like. And I didn't like what I was doing. I hated being pastors. I hated people in the ministry. For whatever reason, I'm not getting into that. I was uh, fed up with these kind of things. I was telling myself, this is all a big joke. I was telling people, this Bible is a joke. This is for people who have no reason to, you know, to can't, don't face a reality. They will use this book. That's what I was thinking about. They scare you with hell. Hellfire. You know, they're scaring you with hellfire. And then, I didn't like it anyway. But long story short, it's interesting that I'm doing exactly what I did not want to do. God has got a great sense of humor. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, my life started off with, uh, with drugs and alcohol. So, I'm, as I, why am I telling you all this? It's simply because, please don't look at me as a great preacher man. I'm here just to tell you, been through some tough things in life been through drugs, alcohol and all kinds of stuff and um, it's, it's true that the power of Christ can set you free. Amen. It's a reality. So that's why I tell you this, not, not, I'm not emotional but I'm telling you it's a fact. If one plus one is two, it is not an emotional thing, it's a fact. Somebody say it's a fact. That's why this book is real, it's a fact. You get my point. That's why, please leave every, I mean, I say leave every other book, you better study well, okay? But get a hold of this book. And let this book be the grounding factor in your life. If you neglect this book, you're in deep trouble. Amen. Because the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. What was in the beginning? What was in the beginning? everything began with the word the beginning began with the word and so if you want to begin anything in your life it better be the word why am i saying that so convincingly because when i was high in my drunkenness and my alcohol i was led by the holy ghost for sure to spend some time in reading this book so i plugged on my headphones hi do not try it at home High as a kite, plugged on the headphones, put on this cassette tape of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Because somebody told me, your deliverance is in this book. <clears throat> so I'm not getting into my story fully. So I opened my Bible, headphones on, high as a kite in the sky. And reading Genesis verse 1 and somebody speaking to me in my audio, in my headphones, with this great bassy voice. In the King James Version, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord moved over over the face of the waters. And I saw the whole thing, creation in three dimension. Before you say hallelujah, let me right there and tell you it is not a visitation of an angel. It was the drug working. 
Because some of you may say, hallelujah, I must stop right there. <laughs> so the point I'm trying to make here is, I read this book, high as a kite, and I plugged my headphones on. I read it, didn't make no sense. I went to the book of Leviticus. I was, when I opened this Bible, the whole Bible poured blood out of its pages in the book of Leviticus. And I'm telling myself, what on earth is this book? I mean, you're talking about the Bible and it's sacrifice, sac animal sacrifice morning to night. It, it actually made no sense. And I just went through it, reading, reading, reading. I came to the book of Genesis. I came to the book of uh, Leviticus and uh, Numbers and Deuteronomy and Joshua and Judges and 1 Kings and 2 Kings and 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. I went through these scriptures without understanding what it said. Never understood. So just in case you're wondering, I didn't understand. Please listen to me. You don't have to figure out everything. Amen. As a matter of fact, this book is so vast in its depth and volume, you will never come to a place to have said, I understand. You'll never come to understand. It is too deep. Somebody say, Amen. Too deep. But anyways, I read the book from cover to cover. Cover to cover. Cover to cover, cover to cover, cover to cover, cover to cover. Because I realized something, as, as Bjorn was speaking, something was happening inside. There was a shift. Can I tell you this morning, before you expect a shift on the outside, God wants to shift something on the inside. Some of us are waiting for shift in our workplace, shift in our financial scenarios, a shift in our relationships, a shift in every area of your life. But God says, the first shift is inside. When that shift happens, the rest will take care of itself. So the Lord was actually realigning something in my heart. As a matter of fact, the book of John chapter 6 and verse number 63, it says, this is what Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Somebody say spirit. This is not the way you say spirit. You say spirit with a little more gusto. Spirit and life. If you're alive, you're going to say life better than what you just said. Okay, am I right? Okay, just say spirit and life. That means this book is powerful than a TNT bomb. This book is powerful than your AK-47. This book is powerful than a multi-purpose machine gun. Am I right? Because it has got spirit and it's got life. Tell me one book which has got spirit and life. This is the only book. All that you study in your college is very good. Alright, please study well. Having have said that. All the other books, they give you information. But this book gives you revelation or oh, somebody shout a better amen. amen this book gives you revelation and it gives you life and when life gets into you dead has to go and life comes in the darkness will flee by itself you don't have to shoot darkness have you tried shooing darkness you can say get out darkness and rebuke it in every name that you know it's not going to go but all i have to do is switch on the lights and the darkness will flee this book is light darkness will run away see the problem is many of us are trying to shoot darkness when the simplest of things is to switch on the light and the light can be switched on in by creating this book into your heart will you say amen, amen. all right so having said that as a background because now that you're convinced i'm not dr sandeep daniel now that you're convinced i've convinced you to say i'm just a simpleton i'm a man of a mighty god that i introduced myself that way i'm not a mighty man of god but I'm a man of a mighty God. And I stand here knowing that with Christ, all things are possible. And I'm here to tell you with Christ, not, without Christ, nothing is possible. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So let's begin right now. And as, as, as I need to add one more thing. Sorry. It's the, uh, it's the fact about me being an airline man. I'm, I worked for an airline company for many years. Uh, many many years and I became the station manager of this airline company in Bangalore all right so but then I, I did something I don't know whether you did this but I did something how many of you have sung the song I surrender all 
Only three people? Four people? All of you sung? Everybody? All right. So if, if all of you have sung, I surrender all, you are in trouble. You're in major trouble. You know why? You just told heaven, I give you everything. Am I right on that? I did not know, but I sang the song. And that singing that song has led me now into being a full-time preacher. Because heaven said, I thought you surrendered all. Now you surrender your everything and your all and serve me full-time. And so if heaven asks you, I thought you just sang silver and gold I have none. But such as I have give I thee, that's a lie because silver and gold my brother, this battery is dying or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> Just check this battery, okay? So, we cannot sing that song, silver and gold, I have none. You cannot sing it. Because you have some, right? Talk to me, somebody. So, if you sing, silver and gold, I have none. I know we are good people, we do not lie. But may I suggest to you, we sing a lot of lies. We don't lie. We sing it. And therefore, if you sung that song, I surrender all. Heaven asks you, good, I'm very, very happy. And by the way, I want to let you know, angels' voice record your songs. That's why this worship services, I am terrified. I'm very, very afraid. Because the songs that we can sing, heaven says, very good, very good. This man is mine. This lady is mine. I mean, she said, I will give you everything. She says, I'm going to keep the cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back. Heaven says, I like that person. So when heaven comes to you and says, okay, now that you have just sung, I have surrendered all. Now that you have said, I give you my everything, my all. Can you come for this worship conference? And then we begin to say, I am very busy at work. Now heaven is confused. You just confuse heaven. Heaven was never confused after Lucifer fell, but you are confusing heaven. Because heaven says, I thought you said, I give you my everything and my all, but you can't attend a conference. But you're a good people. You are good people. I said, you're good people. Oh, your amen can be better for yourselves. I said, you're good people. You are here. Amen. So the thing is, the reason why I'm pulling that up is you must be, you must be careful in all that you sing, in all that you say, because heaven takes notes. So I told the Lord many years ago, I said, I will, Lord, I will serve you with all my heart, but I may not preach, but I can give, you my give people my testimony. And so the Lord take, took it seriously. I, and I kind of told him, you see, I'm not very good at singing, mom, you know? I told the Lord, I, I, I can't sing. Like one of these great guys who sang here, you know? I cannot sing. So I thought heaven will not pick on me because I cannot sing. And I choose, number two, I couldn't speak. <laughs> that's, that's worse off than not being able to sing. <clears throat> I couldn't speak. I mean, I, 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 never, I couldn't stand before people and talk. Because when I stood before people like this, my knees would fellowship with one another. I was afraid to talk before people. So I said, Lord, I can't even preach. So, I mean, what does God want to do with somebody who cannot sing and cannot preach? I can't do nothing. And I actually told the Lord, Lord, you know what, Lord? I'm foolish. I'm, I, I can't be used. I got nothing. I'm too, too foolish. And the Lord said, you are the one I want. I said, why? He says, because I've written in my word, I choose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I, he said, you are qualified. If you're foolish today, praise the Lord, you are qualified. That's not a good excuse. Heaven is not going to be interested in your foolishness. And the heaven says, that's exactly what I want. So here I am. Foolish things of the world God can take to confound the wise. And I quit my job. And now, as I stand before you, I am privileged and honored and proud to announce to you, I'm a man of a mighty God. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Greatest compliment ever is to serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Knowing that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter to his gates with thanksgiving, unto his courts with praise, and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth through all generations. 
Hallelujah. This is true. Having said that, I've given you a little bit of introduction. We have our own website, sandeepdaniel.org. All right, just in case you want to know my story, sandeepdaniel.org. It's an interesting testimony because I never knew such a terrible testimony can sound so good. It's the power of English. They said Sandeep translated himself from darkness to light. Oh, I know how the, the darkness was, but they just put it so beautifully. That's the power of English. Amen. All right, so let's visit that for my website, my information and videos and whatever not. And thank you for your patient list. Genesis 1.26. Can we go to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26? I want to talk to you about the most important thing that I can bring to you this morning about the right purpose. Somebody shout right purpose. Can somebody read please loud and clear wherever you are. Genesis 1 verse 26. If you got it, just read for me the book of Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 26. Good, please. Have you found Genesis? Praise the Lord you have. If you're searching, you fail straight away, fail. But now that you found Genesis, please read for me, okay? Genesis 126. Yeah, go ahead, my sister. Hmm. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over cattle. And all, okay, every creeping thing, somebody shout hallelujah. This verse is an interesting verse because you must first of all understand this verse to start off with anything else you want to do with your life. You know, there's something called the foundation, right? Every building stands on the foundation. And if you don't have the foundation right, you may paint the building beautifully, but one fine day it's going to crumble. You know, there was one YouTube video which showed us somewhere in, in China. The whole building slanted off because it was overweight on one side and the pillars could not take the weight. So Genesis 1.26, <coughs> the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man. All right? Let us. Let us. Let us make man. All right. When God wanted to create the fish, what did he address? What did he speak to? Talk to me, please. Is it okay to ask questions here? Is it okay to ask questions? Is it okay to ask questions or uh, just preach and go? Uh, what kind of... I just like to make sure. My brother says, okay, ask questions. I'm going to ask questions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, when God wanted to create the fish, what did he speak to? Water. Am I right? Right, right. He spoke to the water and the water brought forth the fish. Am I right? Okay, if God wanted to bring birds of the air, what did he speak to? The firmament, the air. Correct? If God wanted to bring the plants, what did he speak to? To the earth. To the earth. Right? To the dirt in the, on the ground. Okay. Now, for the earth, for the birds, let me talk to the birds now. For the birds to sustain, what is the medium? The air. Correct? Somebody say air. I mean, I'm thinking simple, but just get the message right. For God, for the bird to be sustained, God had to speak to the air and the birds came. And that's their medium. Somebody say it's the medium. Because the bird, you take the bird and put it in the, in the, in the water, it dies. Because that's not the medium but when god wanted to create the fish he spoke to the sea and the sea brought forth fish therefore water is the medium for the fish to exist thrive and survive hmm. take a plant 
I don't have no plans here, thankfully. Some of us have plans. It looks very good, decorated in a vase. But the thing is dead. Why? It has been disconnected from its source. What is the source for the, so for the, for the, for the flower? It's the soil. And so you take it from the soil, it dies. But when God made you and me, what did he point at? What was the source? Himself. So the Lord says, let us make man in our image. Somebody say our image. See, this is very important. Convincing you and me. I had this problem earlier. Convincing myself that I am made in the image of God was close to blasphemy earlier. How can I be close to God? How can I be made in the image of God? He says not only image, the Bible says you are made in his likeness. That means if God and I took a selfie, do I look the same? Talk to me. Do I, do, do I look like God? Yes or no? <laughs> Not really on the outside, but in the similar inside. I, I'm getting my point. Obviously, we, I don't look like God because I, I don't know how God looks right. But uh, we know Jesus, we know how God looks like. But th this is the truth, that I am made in his image and his likeness. Okay, I have my daughter who is now seven years of age. And somebody came and told me sometime back, your daughter looks like you. I was very angry. <laughs> Obviously. Am I right? Obviously. I said my genes are strong in my, my, I have strong genes. My daughter looks like me. True. What, what is the question? You, you, know, you see, the point I'm bringing this is, you are made in the image oh, and the likeness of God. You see, this is basic, fundamental, elementary and number one. If I don't get this right, I will get nothing right. You may sing every song you know in the hymn book, but if you do not know who you are, you'll be singing the song, going back and having a panic attack. But if you know who you are. Life is different. That's why I'm not bothered about my critics. You get my point? My critics may say you are good for nothing, but I love me, I love myself. Do you love yourself? I'm not getting a proper yes from you. Do you love yourself? Yes. If you don't love yourself, you'll not love God in you because you are made in the image and in the likeness of God. All right. So what does it mean to be in the image and the likeness of God. It simply means that I function just like my father. In my functionality. You see, see if my daughter looks like me, no big deal. It's true. I'm the father. All right. So there are certain characteristics which has come from me into my daughter. Certain characteristics. Certain traits. I've not thought of these things. It is because of the DNA. Somebody said DNA. DNA. That means God's DNA, the, 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 the fingerprint of God, the, the essence of God is transferred to me because I'm a child of the Almighty God. I, I, am I making sense to you today? All right. So because of this functionality, I do things just like God wants me to do. And I am on this planet Earth with a definite purpose and a plan. Am I making sense to you this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Two roles. Image and likeness. Alright. So the point now is, after having the image and the likeness of God, what is my function on this earth? Alright. Because see, God does everything with a purpose. Somebody say purpose. God does everything with a purpose. Purpose supersedes pleasure. I said something very profound. Purpose supersedes pleasure. Because God for God, His purpose overshoots everything apart from all the other, other things that we think is important. For Him, purpose is important. 
All right. Now, having said that, Genesis 126. Okay, can we all read together? Do you have your Bibles up? Open up. Read. Let's read together. Because this you must see. This you must see. This, uh, this is so wonderful. You must see this. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Okay, are you there? Genesis 126, are you there? All right, three people there. What about the rest of the 25, 40, 50 people of you? Are you there? If you're not in Genesis, straight away you fail. It's the first book in the Bible. Okay, let's read together, please. One, two, three, let's go. Then God said. <laughs> hmm. Right. Stop right there. That is the functionality. The reason why God gave us his image and his likeness is for a purpose. Somebody said purpose. The purpose, the Bible says, is they may have what? Dominion. Somebody shout dominion. I said shout dominion. dominion. That's right. The word dominion means to dominate. Sense here, my brother. You see, if I understand this basic truth, then I'm not going to let the devil run all over my life. Because my DNA, it's not that I'm wanting to fight the devil. Hello, excuse me. I have this DNA inside me to dominate. As somebody say, Amen, brother. Hallelujah. You see, this is not because I want to do something with myself or I'm trying to boost myself to have dominion. I have the DNA to dominate. So once I understand this, my life became better. Because I'm not trying to get to place to a place to dominate. I know I am in the place to dominate. Somebody say, Amen. So now, after knowing I have the word dominate is to have dominion. And that's where you get the word domain. Domain. That's the word domain. So, please understand this. Basic, basic, basic. You are called to dominate. That is your basic functionality. Your amen can be louder and your life will be better. Amen. Mm. amen. Am I making sense to you? If I can get through this one line and download my mind into your head, my job is complete. I can go home happily. I can go home smiling with a whistle. Because this is where God has trouble. To convince you that you have the power to dominate over every circumstance in your life. Sickness and disease must bow. Ah, yeah, yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. That boss who's giving you trouble in the office, he must bow. Amen. That financial crisis and the notes from the bank, which is in red, it must bow. Amen. Because we are called to dominate. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be a major fight. But I want to just let you know that you are called to dominate over every circumstance. You know what happened was this. Now, when you talk like this, when you talk like this, you have, you know, the, the, I mean, somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I just trust me and say, Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I am living post cross. Okay, okay, I didn't get me. I want you to say, Thank you, Jesus, because I'm living post cross. Post cross means after the cross, pre is before, post is after. It's not your airmail post, it is after. All right, so let's thank God for that. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am living post-cross. Because the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And because I have the advantage now, I can look at the Old Testament and appreciate the New Testament. I can look at the New Testament and appreciate the Old Testament. I can appreciate it because it's the spectrum is complete. Oh, hallelujah. What I love about this is because now that I'm standing post cross, I can look at a typical picture of this dominion factor and I can implement it in my life. Uh, let me explain that to you. Because Old Testament people, like for example, the book of Isaiah, chapter 7 and verse 14, the Bible says an angel came, I mean, the Bible says, talks about talking about Mary, a virgin shall bring forth a child. And Isaiah wrote it, understood nothing. And he's telling myself, himself, virgin bringing forth a child? He wrote it, 
didn't understand it. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Unto us a child is born, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And Prince of Peace. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and 7. So he wrote it. Do you know what it meant? Amen. Today. Somebody say today. We can look at that and say hallelujah. That refers to Jesus Christ. Emmanuel God with us. Why? Because we have the spectrum. The whole spectrum. So today I am so glad. That when we talk about dominion. There is a point of reference. Somebody say point of reference. We are not just trying to imagine something else. We have the point of reference. This point of reference. Is when. The invisible God became visible in the form of Jesus Christ. Somebody say an amen. amen. Or I'm the only one excited, I don't know. I can get excited for very, very small things. Seriously. Because I, I appreciate this thing. I appreciate this book. So the Bible says, Jesus Christ was the express image of the invisible God. So if you want to see God, Jesus. He's the express image of this invisible God. What happened? He walked the shores of Galilee. The time was there to pay taxes. And the Bible says, Jesus said to one of his disciples, Go and get a hold of a fish. And he got a hold of the fish. There was money in the mouth. Somebody say, Amen, brother. Amen. And he said, Pay taxes for you and me. This God converts a fish into an ATM machine. Amen. This is dominion, brother. Just in case you're not able to connect the word. This is dominion. Rule and reign. He picks up a Mac meal. A young boy's Mac meal. Blesses it and feeds 20,000 people. I thought you'd say amen. Where do you, where's your 20,000 from? The Bible says 5,000. Ah. But it says 5,000 men. I'm sure each one had one wife. 10,000. Two children. 20,000. In case you thought I got it wrong. No, no. I'm just giving you 20,000. Minimum. A Mac meal took care of 20,000 people. Amen. The children of Israel walking in that wilderness. They looked up to heaven and said, Lord, we need a non-vegetarian meal. The Bible says, meat fell from heaven. Somebody say, Amen. amen. This is dominion. There was a man called Elijah who was there near sitting in the brook, waiting for God and ravens, the Bible says, fed him. Who are you talking about? Ravens. What do ravens do? They take from you. Try standing with a burger on the road. My Indian ravens will take you as well. But these ravens fed the man of God because he was walking under dominion. Praise the Lord, brother. Hallelujah. This morning I want to tell you, God is calling us to walk in that dominion. You're not, I mean, when you say, this is sad, this is English sometimes is very sad. We say we are under the circumstance. I don't know whether you say that. Okay. Oh, brother, I'm under the circumstance. That's why you're in trouble. You're not under the circumstance. You're beyond the circumstance, above the circumstance. Because the greater one, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Somebody shout a Hallelujah. When you have this mindset, you will do something which nobody can do. You know what you'll do? You lift up your voice in adoration. Because expression of dominion is voice activation. Ah, hallelujah, brother. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clap for myself. Seriously. I'm going to clap for myself because I'm excited by what I'm saying. You know, it is, see, what happens when you know you have dominion, how do you release it? We're talking about, my brother Bjorn was talking about releasing that sound. So the expression of dominion 
is through words is through sounds and that's why this prophetic conference is very important because you're going to release this dominion the spirit of dominion by the words and the songs that you sing thank god for the great songwriters fanny crosby wrote about 6000 plus songs how many songs more than 6000 6000 6000 i thought I, I actually i thought i got it wrong i thought 600 no 6000 somebody say 6000 6, imagine for you to come on 6000 will take 22 days she wrote 6000 hymns and yesterday we sang a lot of her hymns the problem with her was this she was blind she was 6000 songs being blind if you have a problem of 6 days being blind what would heaven receive from you? A big mail of complaints. Am I right? Heaven will be bombarded by your tears and your crying. But this is not what this woman said. See, this, is, this woman took dominion over her incapacitation. You understand, brother? See, she knew who she was. <laughs> she understood that nothing can inhibit me. I am doing what God has called me to do because I'm a purpose-filled person. And what does she do, you know? She said something like this. I'm, I'm going to just tell you what she said, maybe not verbatim. She said, and somebody asked her, you're blind and you sing all these songs and glorifying God. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Hallelujah, brother. Oh, what a foretaste of glory. That's her song. How can you sing a song like this when you're blind? I can't sing a song. I can't sing one song. I had some eye irritation some time back. Drops in my eyes. I couldn't see things properly. I was down. Very down. Because I couldn't see things. 6,000 songs. Blind. And she said this. This is what blows my mind. See, she had dominion, number one, over herself. See, the first thing you must have dominion is not your boss in the office, brother. It's not your financial condition. It's over you. If you're able to get a control and have dominion over you, praise the Lord. You've done a great job. Because she said something like this. She said, and somebody asked her, yeah, you're blind and you're writing these songs, you know, what? it doesn't make sense to me. She said, you know what? If there was a chance to be born blind, I will be born blind again. Because the first person I would like to see is the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, you see the attitude? See the attitude? Because I like to quote another person, <clears throat> a prodigy by the name of Helen Keller. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know Helen Keller? Some of us probably yes. Mama may will surely know. Helen Keller was a prodigy. Why? She had a lot of issues. She was she was, couldn't speak. Uh, she was deaf many many problems and she was a prodigy right and somebody asked her some i don't know how they communicated to her they said miss keller what she was blind as well what is worse off than being blind you ask the question what is worse off than being blind because she was blind and a prodigy means she was amazing she spoke to presidents in spite of her incapacitation and asked her what is worse off than being blind you know what she said the worst of than being blind is somebody who can see but no vision. Do you have a vision? You can see. Do you have a vision? Are you happy just attending Sunday, Sunday service? And coming back? No vision? Going in circles? See, the, actually, the devil is very happy. Can I tell you? The devil is happy. Just letting you, he will even wake you up. Time to go. Because no purpose is defeated life. Oh, I thought somebody would say, Amen, everybody's very quiet in this place, brother. Hallelujah. See, I'm talking some stuff which you must think. This is important. What is your purpose? See, God gives you, just, just, just think about this. See, you're not made in the image of somebody else. You're made in the image of God. See, He's given you His power, dominion. To rule and to reign. His image and his likeness. For what? 
for you to cry in this world tears wasting all the tissue crying buckets of water is that your purpose i am here to say no i have come to change that mindset this morning if somebody of you are thinking oh i was born in this family my life is so poor my life is bad i have come in the name of yahweh the god i serve to tell you you've been believing the lie too long you are called to have dominion over your situation and your circumstance and the bible says in hey, there's a book in luke chapter 10 verse 19 i have given you power and authority over all the works of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you Amen. that's just luke 10 19 be excellent in what is good be innocent of evil and the god of peace shall bruise satan under your feet we are waiting for Jesus to crush him. He is already crushed. Now it's under your feet. Somebody say my feet. That's dominion. <clears throat> oh, somebody say amen, brother. It's, it's dominion. That's dominion. To be able to rule over your circumstance. So this is where worship is important. It's an expression of the spirit of dominion. Thank God for these women like Fanny, Fanny Crosby and many others who have written these wonderful songs. <clears throat> They've expressed the emotion in words and put a tune to it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you understand this? This is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. See, we cannot, <clears throat> some of us are not very good enough. Uh, we can't probably write songs. Right? I mean, we're not very smart. Not everybody is smart. We have trouble. To sing a song, trouble. Some of us, that's why the Bible gives you the permission to make a noise. <clears throat> Psalm 101, make a joyful noise. I know some of us can, bray, bray, like a bray, we cannot sing. That's okay. You can make a joyful noise. But my brother Bjorn better play skillfully because he's leading all of us into worship. Am I right? Don't come here and bray. It's okay to bray there. That's why I'm that side. Because I can't sing. I, I can sing, I can sing, but not as good as my brother Bjorn. Uh, you understand that's why the bible says play skillfully you see for this side play skillfully the bible says you can go ahead and make a joyful noise point number one <clears throat> thank god for these great songwriters who have given us words and they put tune to the song that we can come like this <clears throat> lift up our hands and by the way brother Excuse me. Yesterday we had an amazing time. I'll tell you where. Just in case you missed it. Uh, you missed it anyway. But it's on YouTube. It's, no, it's on my channel. It's going to be on my channel. YouTube channel. We had a great hymn night. What is it called? I never knew the hymns. I can lift my hands and worship God with hymns. Because the church I attended many years ago, I sat. I stood up I sat I stood up they passed the plate I put I sat down I got up and then they said go home I said thank you <laughs> never knew there was so much of power in these hymns never knew never knew yesterday I lifted my hands and I worshiped God with those songs making so much of sense hallelujah powerful powerful hymns very good and that's why I'm telling you today, thank God for this worship conference which is going to happen. That you'll be able to put words and attune to your expression in your heart. And you'll be able to sing to the with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your spirit, and all your strength. And it's going to be acceptable fragrance before the Lord. Amen. I'll close with these words. Without understanding who you are, you cannot worship. No, you cannot. You cannot. You cannot. You see, why I worship is because I am made in the image of God. And I am so glad that God saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. I was blind, but now I see. And I want to thank God with all my heart because he's a wretched person like me. He's washed in his precious blood. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. At the cross, at the cross, when I first saw the light. And therefore, I express myself 
in such singing because I am saved not because of me. The book of Titus chapter 3 and verse 5 says, It's not by the works of righteousness what I have done, but according to his mercy, he saved me. And so, I'm thankful. Somebody say, I'm thankful. You see, if you're thankful, brother, your worship will be different. You know, <laughs> you're getting my point, right? Thank you, my sister. Thank you very much. So, if you're thankful, the reason why you're thankful is because you've been forgiven much. That's why you can stand like this, you know, just sing and sing a couple of songs. But, you know, there's somebody who's thankful. Are you getting my point? If you're thankful, your songs will be louder. Your jumping will be better. And you're going to sing with all your heart. And that's my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. And I want to thank God for the times that we're going to have. We're going to have great times. I hope you're planning to be here. Oh, otherwise, you're going to be missing out on something amazing. That much I can tell you, my brother. I, you know, to be honest with you, can I say something here? I never even started what I wanted to share. No, very easy. I had something else in mind. As a matter of fact, I want to talk about John 4.24, but I'm not getting there. Because I'm happy with what I've done just now. We'll keep it for the conference. My closing words as I close this day, yeah, my session, is number one, please get back to your former estate. All right? Do you know what I'm talking about? If you know, say amen. amen. Former estate means not your grandfather's property. It means to your original position. I know the devil messed up. I know we had some trouble. But thank God for the second Adam who restored me back to my former position. As a matter of fact, I'm not in the garden anymore. See, restoration means going back to the garden of Eden. Am I right? Are you in the garden of Eden? Are you in the garden of Eden? Talk to me, please. Aha! I suggest to you, you're not in the garden of Eden. You're seated with Christ in the heavenly places. See, the place that you are right now is better than the place you lost. I thought somebody will say, Amen, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the place that we lost is not the place we come back to. Otherwise, all of us will be sitting in the Garden of Eden. Am I right? Restoration means putting you back to the Garden of Eden. We'll be swinging from tree to tree. That's not me. That's my cousin, brother. My, no, 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 that's not me. I'm made in the image of God. But I'll be sitting in the Garden of Eden. Playing the harp, probably. I don't know. But... Remember, you're not seated in the Garden of Eden. You are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. I thank God for my position. My body is on this earth, but my spirit is connected to God. Your amen can be louder, brother. Amen. Am I making sense to you? So if you understand who you are in Christ, you're not going to have a bad day. That's why your Facebook status will not have a crying emoticon. Because somebody said you don't look good, but you will say, thank you, Lord. I am made in your image. I am made in your likeness. Thank you. You made me just the way I am. I love me. Do you love yourself? You better learn to love yourself because nobody else is going to love you better than you. Amen. I learned that a, a very long back. I love myself. That's why I don't have to have somebody with me to entertain me. Talk to me, somebody. That's why we get upset when this person said something. Oh, I'm lost. No, if you love yourself, you don't need anybody's approval. Because I love myself, I can like myself. I can like my own photographs. <laughs> exactly right. If you see my Facebook, which is Sandeep Daniel, I posted today's picture, the worship conference, and I liked me. <laughs> I posted an Instagram and I love me, I put a heart on loving me. I put a heart. Because I love me myself. You get my point? You see, the point is this. The day you understand that I am loved. The day you understand God has given me power and dominion. The day you understand I am not under the circumstance anymore. The day you understand that this God in heaven has given me an assignment on planet earth. He's put me here with a purpose and a plan. And he's given me his spirit within me. And he's given me wisdom and common sense. And he's given me these things and put me on this earth for a purpose. And I'm not going to leave the planet before my purpose is completed. 
Thank you, Ma, for that one amen. Purpose. All right? God bless you. See you soon. Amen. I, I don't know who to hand over the mic to, but I'm just going to leave this mic here and go and sit, okay? I don't know nobody else is there around to say bye. Brother, you're there. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thanks. <laughs> Can we appreciate Pastor Sandy? I mean, for sure, that's very profound. Uh, that's very deep. I think one of the things that worship is an expression of dominion. That all we are doing when you're worshiping God, we're just expressing dominion. Amen. I want us just to rise up on our feet and just to, you know, lift up our hands as we stretch and we just thank God. I mean, we just worship him. I mean, we just want to release some sound in this moment just to, you know, express ourselves to him. And, and as we do this, we are just simply expressing dominion. I want somebody just to come and help us on the keyboard as we just lift up our voice to him. Come on, let's just uh, lift up our voice to him. Father, we thank you. We thank you even for your word, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for having spoken to us so powerfully, Lord God. And Lord, as we worship you, Lord God, we just extend your kingdom, Lord. We speak of your greatness, O oh God. We express our hearts, O oh God, my Father. And Lord God, this makes your dominion become complete, Lord, as you dominate the world through us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God. Yes, come on, let's just lift up our voice. Let's just lift our voice and speak out. Yes, let's just release it. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, because we reign and rule, Lord God, with you, Lord God. We are seated with Christ in the heavenly places, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, because we are, Lord God, kings together with you. We reign with you, Lord God. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's just lift up our voice to him. Thank you, Lord. We dominate with you. We rule with you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We glorify your name. We magnify your name, O oh Lord. You deserve the glory, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign. You reign in majesty, Lord. You reign in majesty, Lord. We reign with you, Lord. We reign with you, Lord. For you reign in majesty, reign in majesty, reign in majesty. We reign with you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we reign with you, Lord. open your mouth and begin to speak something to me. Lord, you reign. And we reign with you, Lord. You reign. We reign with you, Lord. Father, we worship you. We exalt you. We thank you, Lord. You deserve the glory. Come on, just release some sound in the atmosphere. Anyhow, it doesn't have to be a perfect song, but just release it anyhow. As a form of dominion. Yes, we can dominate through our sound. We thank you, Lord. Lord. 
Amen, amen. Let's appreciate him when he's come to take over. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Why don't we celebrate Pastor Sunday? <laughs> and why don't we celebrate David? And the wonderful worship team. And can you celebrate yourself? You're selfish. <laughs> yeah. We, we really thank God for today. And I, I think, okay, let me hear. I uh, understand we have some friends from Deliverance Church. Let's see, let's see. And we have somebody from Kerogoya. And we have men or some others who are here with us. Gisiri, where do you come from? Huh? Friends. Grace Hill. Okay, let me see. let's see Grace here. I can see her humor is increasing. Wisdom is increasing. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you want us to... Okay, it's now about... What time is it? One. One of mm, Maybe we take a few minutes as we wait. Maybe somebody can inquire whether the tea and the snack... They are ready. Do you want us to take a short break and then we continue? Sure. Yes. Just to take a short break and then we continue. Is it okay? We take a short break, a tea break, and we have some snacks. Next time we're going to make you a party. Let me tell you why. Oh, I, I mean, especially during the 10, 11, 12. You know, I love quoting Psalms 22, verse 29. In King James Version, especially, it says, Let the fat on earth eat and worship. <laughs> Can you look at somebody? Yeah, like in the seat track, you just look at everybody, won't be a let the fat on earth eat and worship. <laughs> of course, of course, in Hebrew, in Hebrew, when you talk of fat, you talk of being let those who have prospered. Let those who have prosper. And I bless God we are a prosperous Amen. people. Amen. You can't worship God and remain the same. Amen. Do you know why the Pharaoh could not allow the children of Israel to go? They kept asking, we want to go and worship or sacrifice to our God. Do you know why he couldn't want it to happen? He spiritually knew that a people who have learned to worship cannot be slaves again. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yes. No longer a slave to fear. Where is that pianist? I am a child of God. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Can you testify? Say, I 
I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with. Of deliverance, of deliverance. There's a song rising for my enemy. Till all my fears are gone, till all my fears are gone. Testify from my mother's soul, you have chosen me. Love us for my name, and I tell you, Jim, I've been born again to your family. Your blood flows through my veins. What round 
in perfect love. Yes, you rescued me and I will find.
raise up your hands and thank God because you know who you are. And after this, because you know who you are in Him, He's our source. Just lift up your hands and bless Him. He's my source. Jehovah is my source. Hallelujah. Yes, they made this body for me. But what I am is from him. And for that reason, I will bless his name. Father, we thank you as we take a break and as we go on to have that little bit of fellowship and fellowship. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that all good things come from the Father of light in whom there is no shadow of doubt and we thank you that we come from you in Jesus name Amen. Hallelujah So what time is it Mamiya? Five past one Okay Can we do it exactly from two? Or we take how many minutes? What? Half, half two. Okay, you can have a break. You can just go in there. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, you're very welcome. And.